Well, good afternoon, everybody. This is Barbara Bach, and with me today is Heather Reeves. Hello. And we're from the MLS department here at the Metro Texas Association of Realtors, and we are so glad you've joined us today. During this webinar, as you think of any questions, please type them in the question pane located at the right side of your screen. If you can't see the question pane, you may have to click the orange arrow button to maximize it. We will do our very best to answer as many questions as possible and as time allows by the end of this presentation. Now this afternoon, <clears throat> we're going to be showing you the new Instanet product and the Transaction Desk program. This program will allow you to not only upload your documents, but you can also do electronic signatures and create tasks for your transactions and do a lot more. We have been getting a lot of calls from agents about transaction and the electronic signature through that program. Does that mean zip forms is going away? Absolutely not. If you like using zip forms for your electronic signature and using that product in Excel, you continue to do so. It's not going away. So for those of you that were asking that question, zip forms is here to stay. I do want you to know that this program, Instanet, has over 400,000 subscribers, which is realtors and boards and MLS all across the United States. And Houston and Austin use this program as well. Now, I'm not able to show you all the functions that Instanet can do today, but I do want you to know that we were just recently approved for three hours of trek for uh, Instanet. And if you'll just check the class schedule on MyMetroTex.com for dates and times as this new class begins to be offered. Um, we did our first one uh, a couple of weeks ago, and now I've got to get some more on the calendar. So the first things first, you don't have to use Instanet except to load documents into your listing. And that's what I'm going to show you first, all, first off, is how to upload a document to your listing. So I'm going to go to Matrix, and I'm going to go to Input, and I'm going to select a listing that I've already started. So this would be a listing you've completed, and now it's time to add documents. So I'm going to go ahead and select this one right here. Nothing has changed except the verbiage. It used to say Manage Documents, now it's via Transaction Desk. So I'm going to click on that. We give it a moment, and a window is going to appear. There's the little logo for Instanet. I have to create a transaction. Because I've already started the listing, Instanet knows the name of my transaction. It puts in the address. The next box is type. If I click the drop down, what is this? It is a residential listing. I've in, it's imported data from MLS, which is Netres, and then what is my role? I am a listing agent. So now I just click Create, and I'm at Instanet. That's how easy it is, so far, to upload your document. <clears throat> right here, I will either I have to click on the blue bar to find my document or I can drag and drop from the desktop. So I'm going to click the blue box right here and I'm going to find my documents. I let you know that you can do a Word doc, you can do a PDF doc. So I'm going to select this PDF document and I'm going to click open. Oh wow that was fast. See? How easy is that? If I want to add another document, there's a plus sign right up here in the top right hand corner. And I get the same little screen. And let me open this one. And here it is. Well, not quite as fast, but it's pretty good. <laughs> oh, I think I just uploaded the both, but that's okay. Please notice the green star. I'm going to click on the green star to explain it to you. 
The green star means it's for MLS participants and subscribers only. You can see all the documents. If I selected a private document, no one can see it but you. I don't think you want it, a private document. And a public document is only sent to where, Heather? The client portal? That's right, the client portal, so they can see the documents. MLS only, <clears throat> pardon me, is the, um, the default, is the default. With MLS only, does that show up in IDX feeds as well? Yes, it does. <clears throat> now, look over here, the three little, some people call this the snowman, some people call it the pipe, I call it three little circles, <clears throat> pardon me. So I'm gonna click on it and you have some choices. I can delete the document, I can rename it, I can download it, or I can view it. So I have some choices here and that's how easy it is to upload your document. I'm through. I'm going to close the tab right up here. Now I'm back here. I can upload photos and do whatever else I need to do. Was that easy enough for you, Heather? That was pretty easy. I like it. I do too. All right. Now we're going to get into the complete program of Instanet. So up here on the portal, I am going to select Instanet in just a moment. However, when you're working on your computer, whether it be a desktop or a laptop, and you've never clicked on Instanet from the portal, it is going to come up with the pre-flight check. It will do that on every computer that's never logged into Instanet before. So since I've logged on with this machine before, I couldn't show you it in action, but this is exactly what it looks like, what you're seeing now. And it won't do that again. This also goes with mobile devices as well. Yes, thank you. Yes, and that's a good thing. You can do this on your phone and your your uh, tablet. Your yeah. So we've done our pre-flight check. Now I'm going to click on the Instanet logo on the right. <clears throat> Take a moment, and there it's going to load here in just a second. A lot of stuff is on my dashboard, but we're going to go to the left side of the screen first. I'm going to give you a general overview, and then we'll get into some more detail. If you'll notice on the top left-hand corner, I have three horizontal lines, and I'm going to click on it, and it expands this. So this is the agent dashboard. I'm going to come back to that in a moment. Transaction desk, when I click on it, shows all the transactions I have done. Think of zip forms for just a moment. When you create a transaction, that's what it is. All right, I'm gonna expand it again. Authentisign. This is how you can send something for electronic signature. And so you can see I had one sent out for signing. And I'll show you more about that in just a little bit. Instanet forms, guess what? There's your TREC, T-A-R, and the Netres forms. Metrotex forms will be going in uh, shortly. There was an issue, remember Heather, about the broker, information about broker mm -hmm. services? They were having an issue with that one particular form. Yes, so as soon as that is um, over the hump and they figure out what's, why it won't load very well, it'll be here for your um, use. Then we have what's called the doc box, document box, where you can have your documents. I'm gonna, if I go to my folders, I can, if I had in any folder I could, my transaction folder, those are the documents I have in my transaction folder. Task manager. If you have a task that you want to remember and attach it to a transaction, you can. If you are a broker, head of firm, you have broker tools. As you can see, you have more things than um, an agent would have. And if any of you are still faxing, well, there you go. It automatically builds in a fax cover sheet for you. Contacts. You'll see I've added some contacts. It's very easy to add a contact. It's right up here in the top right-hand corner. If I click Add, Notice, 
you can upload from Google. If I click create a contact, I have ownership and then I have type. What type of contact is this? You have a large selection. So you would pick whatever your contact position is. Going back over here to the left side of the screen, I'm going to close that. I'm going to take you through the setup options because when you first log into Instanet, I think you should go here first, and here's why. When I click on Preferences, I'm going to click the drop down on the user information. All of this information comes over automatically, but you should check it just to make sure that everything is as it should be. So there is my name and so forth. <coughs> my office information, just make sure that everything is correct. And then you have an email signature. I would strongly suggest that you go ahead and put in an email signature. An email signature should be who you are, what you do, and who you're with. So I have my name, a title, and the name of the firm that I'm with. And then of course you'd click update. Branding. This is where you can upload photos if you want to. This would be a personal photo. This would be a company logo. And then of course a fax cover sheet logo. And if I clicked on personal photo, I would just need to find it wherever I had a photo and then upload it. And once you've done that, then the last one is login. And you really don't need to change this because you log in from MLS and that's a whole lot easier just remembering one login and passcode. So that's the first thing you should do once you go to Instanet is check under the gears over here which is called setup options and that's your preferences. I'm also going to let talk about clauses. For those of you that use zip forms, you can add phrases like um, all parties must respond to this offer by 5 p.m. or whatever clause or phrase you might want to use. You certainly don't have to and some agents don't but I wanted you to know that it's there. As you can see, you have your checklist manager, your transaction templates, just like zip forms. You can gather all your forms together and copy that to a new transaction. So you see, it's very similar to zip forms, very similar. Service providers, I don't have any service providers. That would be my favorite people. And then there's support and sharing, I don't, I'm not sharing with any groups. The main thing, pardon me, you'll be with is your preferences, clauses, and we have um, checklist manager, which is great. You can add checklists, what you need to do. I added one celebrate after closing, because I'm sure that's what you do when you have a closing, you celebrate. The question mark is next, and I do want to encourage you the little help videos, there's all kinds of help videos. They're very short and sweet and to the point. Look at all of these that you have. And they've really helped us as well. There's the Authentisign one. There's 28 underneath that one. I'm going to click on one just very quickly to show you how short they are. I'm not going to play the whole thing. But as you can see, they play music and no one's talking, you just follow the arrow and there you go. It's very, very simple to watch. All right, so that's everything under the gear that we're going to talk about. And let's start at the beginning. I'm going to go to the dashboard. This is my dashboard. Let's talk about a little bit. Top right hand corner. There are those three little bubbles again. I'm going to click on that. Show widgets. Hmm. I'm going to click on that and see what it does. Ah. These buttons here will allow me to add more here to my desktop. Just 
like matrix home screen. They're called widgets there, they're called widgets here. You'll notice I have a lot I can choose from. Let's say if I want to grab tasks, I can grab it and put it on my desktop and there it is right here. You can have six of these on your desktop. So I'll grab um, completed and I'll put it there. So I have six now. Let me show you what happens if I try to add another one. It, it says I've reached my maximum. Okay. If I've decided I don't want these on my desktop, I click the X here, it removes it, and the same here. You will notice I have one blue one left because looking at the left side of my screen, I've chosen to put all of these on my desktop. I can email documents. I can actually start a digital signing. I can upload documents. I can create a transaction and contacts. If I wanted to get rid of one, I click the X and it's gone. So now I have two up there. I'm going to click the three little buttons again, or the three little circles, and I'm going to hide the widgets. If you can see this, look closely, that padlock is open. If I click it, I can't, I can't remove any. See there's no X? Let me do that again so you can see it. There's the X and the up and down arrow where I can sort and get some information. If I click the padlock, I don't get the X. I can't do anything. So that's my agent dashboard. Over here on the left, I'm going to click the house and this is my transaction desk. This is going to show all my transactions that I have. So we're going to start a transaction from here, from Instanet. So right here on the agent dashboard, I am going to create a transaction. It's very similar to zip forms. You're creating your transaction from zip forms, but we're doing it from Instanet. So I'm going to click create a transaction. Here is my create a transaction box. I have to give it a name. I'll um, give it, um, let's see, what should we do? Should we do a buyer or a seller, Heather? Let's do a buyer. Okay, I'm going to do a buyer, buyer Betty. <laughs> template. If I wanted to pull up a template, I could, but I don't want to. What type of transaction is it? It is a residential sale, meaning I have a buyer and she's going to make an offer on it. Where am I going to import the data? I could import it from Realist Tax. For example, if I was importing, creating a listing, I think I'm going to change it to a listing. Let's do it from a listing. L-E-S-L-I, -S Leslie Lister. <laughs> and we're going to do a listing. My import data, I'm going to take it from Realist Tax because it's not in Netris. I am got a phone call and I'm going out to a house to make a presentation. I'm going to assume I'm going to get the listing. I'm going to start the transaction. So I'm going to go to Realist. Now it says tax ID. Well, I don't have tax IDs memorized and obviously I don't on this one. So I'm going to click the magnifying glass and I'm going to select the county which is going to be Dallas. Dallas and I'm going to put in an address and a street name Whoops. and I can put in a city if I wanted to I don't have to. It's going to search the tax data it found it I'm going to select it oh looky there it pulled up the tax ID and everything I know it's smart a whole lot smarter than I am <laughs> Very simple, I clicked on create a transaction, this window comes up, gave it the information, I click create in the lower right, uh, top right hand corner. Now I have a little wizard to go through, it's very very simple. It shows me the address, property type, I can tell it's uh, residential, 
I can fill in anything I need to right here, T-E-X-A-S, oh no, it just wants two letters. So I can fill in anything that I'm, I can. Now notice over here, the lot and block number on the left is not there, but I can see it right over here. So I wanted to put in lot 18, because it said that right here, LT18, and then I could put in the block number, which is 8473. 8473. Now I can go down here at the bottom and save it and exit, but I want to show you what the wizard will do for you. Top right hand corner, very easy. I click next. All right, I'm going to this person's house. I'm going to hope I get the listing agreement signed. So I'll put tomorrow's date. And I'm going to put in an expiration date. And I'll just put in, I don't know, January 11th. So I'm not going to fill in anything else. And I'm going to go to next. All right, I'm the listing agent. This is the name of my company. However, I can add somebody else. I'm going to click add. And I'm going to add um, someone to the um, transaction. It could be another agent we're working in as a team, but look what I can do. General, listing agent, seller. I have some choices. Let's see what happens when I select listing agent, and I'm going to put in Heather, and I'll put in her last name, and then I can put in her email. There we go. And then I could put in her license number and so forth. I can also add this address to my address book, but I might already have her there. I'll uncheck it. And I'll click save. Oh, notice it says preferred. So her name is Heather, but maybe she prefers another name. And then that would be an address for her. I don't need any of that. I'm just gonna click save. So notice what it did here. So you can add as many people as you need to. And if by chance you've made a mistake, notice there's the trash can and you can delete right here. I'm gonna, oh, there's a contact over here. I can add a contact for my contact card if I want to. And I'm gonna click next. And it needs forms. It doesn't find any forms. So I need to click add in the lower right hand corner. Look right here, Heather, I can just get my TAR forms right here. I'm gonna to go to TAR. Now many of you know the number of a form. I'm gonna go up here and type in 1101, exclusive right to sell. Very nice. And I'm gonna select the circle and it's in the basket. Here's another way you can search. It's called information about brokerage services. Well, I'm not gonna type the whole thing and I don't know the number of it. I'm gonna type in services, S-E-R-V-I-C-E-S. -E -E Pretty cool. That is very cool and it pulls up both TAR and TREC. That's you. right. So I'm gonna select this one. Notice I have two in the basket now and I'm gonna type in the word pool just to show you again you can type in part of the name of the form, and if I want them all back again, I just empty it, the search box, I clear it out, and here are all the forms. Very simple. Isn't that nice? Very nice. All right. Now I want these forms in my transaction, so I click Add, and it adds all three of them together. Very nice. We are on step four of five. So I'm gonna to go to next. I'm not gonna do anything about the fax cover sheet because I don't fax anything. So I'm gonna say, I'm done. And just so y'all are aware, those fax back cover sheets are automatic on all your transactions. So they're always gonna be there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just um, some people still like to fax, so that's why it's there. So I'm on my transaction dashboard. Here is detailed overview, 
here, is, here are the forms. Now, I can pull up any one of my forms if I want to, where it says go to forms. So let's look at this form right here. I'm going to pull it up. And there it is. It fills in everything that came in over from the, uh, Emma, um, the tax rolls and what I typed in. So I put the listing date, and of course I can fill in whatever I want to put in here, 15%. Um, I can fill in wherever I need to fill in. Let's talk about what's up at the top. We have a lot of options uh, up there. No. <laughs> so I can open it, I can save it, I can copy it. I can save it as a PDF, I can clear watermark if I want to put a watermark on it. See what I just did? It's a draft. See, I could fill all this out, Heather, and then I could send it to someone and have them review it. It's a draft. Okay. That's pretty cool. So I go back to file, I can print it, and I can send it. How do I want to send it? Whoops, sorry. I can send it by email, fax, doc box, or digitally sign it. I will show you how to do that in just a moment. I'm going to remove the watermark. There we go. Then, of course, we have the fonts. And I mentioned clauses. If I wanted to add a clause or phrase, I have to select the right box. I guess it's paragraph 11 that I need to get to. No, not on this one. 15. I've got the wrong form up for listing, but that's okay. So let's see. There's my clauses. Let's see if I have any personal clauses. I do. There's the pool. And that's the one that I want to add. Let's see if it's going to add for me today. All right. There it is. How about that? Well, that saved you a lot of time there. Yes, it does, if you like using that particular feature. Transaction forms, these are all the forms that are in my transaction. I can jump to page six so quickly. I'll go back to page three, and I'm back to page one. And if you have a little difficulty in seeing, you can certainly increase the size of what's on your screen. I wish it would do it. It's not doing it right now. It is not. Okay. Well, let's pretend that it did, Heather, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's already big enough. <laughs> That's right. And then I can send feedback, get form information or help. I'll show you AuthentiSign in just a little bit. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this, but yes, we're going to just go right past strikeout because we know all about striking out, which you shouldn't. <laughs> a lot of brokers don't um, want you to strike out anything. I can make a line. I can highlight something. And there is the this particular feature. Uh, come on. I'm waiting for it to load. Let me explain it. If I was going to email this to someone, I can block this information out. Something There it is. I can block it out and you can't read it. Okay. That's a nice feature. And I can make it as big or as small as I need to. So if you're going to send this to someone, some kind of private information you didn't want them to see. And then I can put something in there if I wanted to. Like a notation? Type. Yeah, make a notation. All right, so that's pretty exciting. Now I want to go back to what I was doing. I'm going to click the back button on my browser bar and as you can see it will take me back eventually to my transaction dashboard. I could have hit the house over here on the left as well. Okay, so, let's talk about uploading a new document to your transaction. You've loaded your forms. Now, your forms are going to be things from TAR, TREP, 
but if you have a form that you like to load up, um, a form from your office that explains your company, or maybe it's a form of the floor plan of a listing, whatever it might be, I'm going to go to go to documents. I'm sorry. Yes, I'm going to go to documents. And I'm going to click add over here. And I'm going to add a new document. Same thing. Drag and drop. And there it is. So you can add a document from MLS or directly from Transaction Desk. Absolutely. Now you'll notice there's a little hand with a bell here. I can request this document for review. And if I select this, it's in my basket. If I unselect it, and I have the three little dots. Oh my goodness, look what you can do now. I can preview it. I could download it. I could rename it. I can send just this document. I can copy or move it. I can slice it up and mark it up. I can sign it for digital signature. I can upload a revision. Then I can see all my revisions, notes, history, convert to PDF, and finally I can delete it. So you have a lot of choices in Instanet what you can do with your document whatever document that might be. I'm going to go back to the house on the left. I'm going to wait for it to load. All right. You will notice these two have stars. Now, why would they have stars and the others don't? Why do you think? Hmm. So, let's look at this. This is a uh, residential listen. This came over from... Uh, MLS, that means it is a MLS, you can view it. So let me go back here. Ooh, uh-oh. There we go. There's my menu. It's a little different here. Contacts, forms, documents, my checklist, tasks. So let's take a look at one of these and we'll do it for e-signature. So I'm at my transaction desk. I'm going to look at this one first. So when you pull up a transaction that you've done, you'll see the address or the name of the transaction. And you'll notice this one has Authentisign. It says it's approved. I'm going to go to signings. I want you to see what it looks like when it has been signed. You get flags, checkered flags. They've authentic signed and they're all done. And I can look at the final document over here. I see someone's asking a question. Yes, this is going to be recorded for you so that you can pause and follow it at your leisure. Absolutely. So here is the document that I wanted to create. This is the finished document, and let me show you where the signature is. There they are right there. Okay. I'm going to go back, and I'm going to show you how to send a document for digital signature. So I'm going to pull up this property, Grantwood, and notice my authentic sign is empty. I'm going to click Go to Signings. Hmm. So I want to add signing name. This is a test, and I'm going to save it. This is step by step. It is so easy. Do I want to change it? I could change it right here if I needed to. Simul sign. That means if I send it to Mr. and Mrs., they'll both get the email at the same time and they can sign it simultaneously. There are advanced options. 
you wanted to set an expiration date on the signing, if you wanted to set some uh, reminders, you could. You probably won't. So that's step one. We got a check mark there. We're good to go. Let's go to step two. I can add a new signer right here. I could add a signer for my contacts. I could add myself. But I'm going to go to the transaction because I added some transactions. So I'm going to send to me and I'm a reviewer. I'm going to add me. Now watch. I'm going to add another person. I'm going to add a new participant. So I'm going to add Heather. Whoops. And I'm going to put in an email that I have open so I can show you. And then whoever I'm sending it to, what is their role? you have a lot of other information that you can fill in which you really don't need to put any of this other information in the three in red is what you need to do so I'm going to add so now I have a couple of people here step three my documents for those of you that like to keep your documents in the cloud Look what you've got. You've got OneDrive, Dropbox, Google Drive. I could upload a file from my computer, upload one by fax, upload it by email, print driver, wherever I want to select it from. I can select forms, but I'm going to do it from this one. I think I have some forms and documents in that transaction. I sure do. I'll select both of them, and I'll add them. I'll wait give you for this. a lot of options to yes, choose from. Yes, I know. Oh, wait. Let's see. I need to add another document, Heather. So I'm going to go to select forms. I forgot one. So if you forget one, ah, looky here. If I forgot a lead-based paint, I can do it right here. Ah, come on. There we go. So I'll just, um, I'll select this one. Oh. Okay, no items have been selected. All right. Hmm. Well, this is, uh, well, okay. Let's try this again. Okay. Hmm. Let me put in a number. All right. Uh -oh. Okay. Well, this is good. You like this? <laughs> okay. Well, I, I need to work on that. I have no idea why it's not adding a form, but pretend that, it, <laughs> pretend that it added a form. I think we need to work on that. Now, the next thing is the design. That's my document. <laughs> you will notice as I scroll down, it's the same document. Over here, you have drag and drop. But let me say this. You don't have to drag and drop, but I'm going to show you. You don't have to drag and drop a signature. You can do the initial. You, can, you have the date, wherever you want it to go. Now, you know, if I go back, I can save and continue or continue without saving or I can cancel. At this point, if I forgot something, I could do that. But I'm going to go to next. And I can send the invitations. So I'm going to do that one more time, just so you'll understand, because it's to see how easy it is. So I'm going to go to, I'm going to wait for just a moment. So I'm going to go to my transaction desk. This is where it all begins, right here, your transaction desk. And I'm going to select this one. And I have the data input sheet, but I'm going to select another form just so that you can see. 
from TAR. And I'll brew the 1601. And I'm going to select that one and add it. So there I am. Now I'm going to go to Authenticine. Let me go back and see what I named this transaction. I have several transactions. I can't remember the name. So it was this one. I'll go ahead and open it. There's my name and my transaction. When you open your transaction, now I'm going to go to Signings, Authenticign. And I'm going to go to Add. I'm going to give it a name, Barb. And I'm going to save it. So there's everything there. Participants. I can add a new participant again. Remember, it can be anyone you want to add. And add their email. Right there. And you add it. Sign the documents. Step three. I'm just going to do the documents from the transaction. There's the one to four and there's the data input sheet, and I add them. This is almost like one-stop shopping, Heather. Uh-oh, I've not assigned signers yet. Well, buyer one, who's that gonna be? Uh, it's gonna be HR. <laughs> and buyer two, it's not gonna be you. So, she's a signer, I'm gonna save it. So you might get that screen, you just have to make note of who the signer is and then notice it's preparing the 20 page document you can upload by the way as many documents as you need in MLS or in your transaction I was getting a question about the documents is there a size limit no there's not a size limit yay that's great I'm gonna cancel this um, so the last thing I just went through four simple steps and sent it on its way. I've successfully completed everything to create the signing process and I send the invitations. And they were sent. You can have, going back to MLS on your documents, you can upload quite a few documents. You're not limited to five anymore. You know, Heather, we've had questions um, about why we went to this particular program. The other program was very limited. In this one, you have much more flexibility than the other transaction program that we have. So, quick little review again. If you are in Matrix and you need to upload your documents, this is the only thing you have to do in Instanet. All the others, of course, we'd like you to do all the other functions, but the only thing you have to do is this is how you upload your documents into your listing. So I'm at input and I'm gonna pick a listing and I go down to manage documents via transaction desk. If I have not created a transaction for the, pro, um, the listing, it's going to pop up. I've already created one, as you can see, it's not asking me for a transaction name, it's just asking me to upload a file. So I'm going to upload a file, you find it just like you normally do, and lo and behold, here is the file. And it tells me this is MLS. Now I have a star here, if I want to make that private I can, but I'll make it MLS. Um, make it MLS only and I have a star here and I'll make it public just to show you that the star is a little bit different in color so that's how easy it is to upload your document and again when you go back to the portal and you select Instanet your screen comes up like this the agent dashboard as you can see, I have one, two, three, four transactions. Think of transactions like you would in zip forms. I have some out for signing, as you can see right here. It's in progress, it's in progress, and it's been approved. So right there on my home screen, I know my documents have been signed. 
these are forms that I have. Now these forms are in all my transactions. I don't know which ones are going. I have to look carefully. See, that's for Barb. That's for Leslie. Le Leslie List. That's a tongue twister. <laughs> it sure is. Leslie. <laughs> so you have to look carefully that these are the forms in these transactions right here. And then, of course, there's the documents. Again, you can create a transaction from here. You can upload a document from here. But I want to upload a document, so I'm going to go to um, go to documents and my transaction folder. These are all my transactions. I want to load a document to this particular transaction. I have to go to add and these are my choices. I'm going to add a new document. Where do I want the document? I want to see if i got another document. Let's try this one. Whatever one this is. And then I upload it. And I'm good. Again, we have the three little bubbles. Oh, slice and markup. Let's take a look at this. So, do I want to slice it or mark it up today, Heather? What do you think I should do? Hmm. Why don't we go to slice? Let's see how that works. Go to slice? Let's see. So, you have a document that has, oh, look at all these pages. Over here on the left, yes, I'm going to continue. That's how you get it. Up oh, now. What do I want to do with this particular page? Uh, if I wanted to highlight something, I could highlight something. I could close that. Yes, I'm going to save that. Close that. I have to wait. And if I wanted to remove some pages, I could. I can throw some in the trash can. You can slice and dice a document if need to. I don't know if I would want to do that, but you know what? You have the flexibility to do that and add and get rid of whatever ones you want to get rid of. And then, of course, you would save whatever you've done. And you can move the pages around. You see how I did that? Click, hold, and drag. And then I'll go ahead and save it. I can save, save as, or replace a document. So I'll just save it as it is. So you have that choice as well. Yes, I want to confirm it. So what, are there any questions I need to answer, um, Actually, Heather? yes, we've gotten a couple of questions. Good, um, what we got? One, and I could not remember the answer to this. Does DocuSign work with this program? This is a independent program, a third party program, just like DocuSign just like zip forms so i'm not integrating zip forms this is a separate program instant is a separate program i don't know if they're wanting to upload a document that has been signed with docusign into a transaction because you can upload any document you can upload a pdf you can upload a word document i'm not sure why you'd want to upload something from docusign but they don't they don't talk to each other it's not like how we loaded from Realist Tax. Okay. Yeah, okay. and it doesn't talk to each other that way. And another question, somebody was asking about templates. If you yeah. would show them again where those are located. Sure, I'd love to. Over here on the left side of the screen on this menu where it says set up, it says templates. I'll show you how to add one. So what kind of ownership it's my template and I have to give it a name all but uh, for um, let me do sold sold and um, residential sale not a listing sale and I save that there's detail there's checklist oh do I want to add a checklist to my template so I'll add a I'll add a checklist. So I'll do this one here, and I'm just going to select a few. 
residential single family listing accepted contract. These are checklists, things you want to check off as you go through the process. So I'll add those. Contacts, I can add a contact. Um, I don't know who you'd add in contact except yourself because you're the, you're the one either on the selling side or the listing side. Documents and folders. If I wanted to add a document to a transaction template, I certainly could. So I'll add this. And then forms. Here are all the forms. This is the big thing in the template right here. There's the NetRest input forms. Do you know that the residential, residential data input form, you can add that as well. So I've, I'm gonna add another form. Uh, let's see. There we go. Again, I'll do this 1601, and I'll throw that in the basket, and I'll do the 1101. I know it's just for sale, but just showing you that you can add more than one form at a time. And I've created my template. Nice template. I'll close all those. All right. So there's my template. Now to use my template to create a brand new transaction, I've created this wonderful template. I'm gonna click add. I'm gonna create a new transaction from template. Template name, here it is, sold. Input source, that's optional. See it says optional and I'm gonna create. Because if it's for a listing template, you, you might not have the uh, MLS number yet, or for sold, I should say. And there it is, just like I showed you earlier. There's all the, I can go through the uh, wizard, or I can save and exit, and it's going to have air, all the documents, and there they are right here. So hopefully that answered your question about templates. Any other wonderful questions that we have? Hmm, let's see. I'd like to know if they, who's ever uh, on the webinar, if you find this pretty easy, let me give you the direct number to the MLS department because if you do have questions, please, please don't hesitate to call us or email us. Our direct number to the MLS department is 214-540. 2755. You can also email us at mls at dfwre.com. So make sure you let us know if you're having any difficulties with transaction. Okay. I'm, yes. I am getting a couple of questions here. Um, one is asking, if, does the broker have an ability to add forms for an office? Yes, I'm going to go uh, over here to uh, preferences. Let me find, um, there's broker, let's see, program settings. Uh, yeah, they can create a template too, the broker can. They can they can set up. Um, I gotta find the broker checklist manager. There's a broker. I can go up here too, by the way, and log in as the broker. View as a broker. Look up here in the top right hand corner. I click view as a broker. And I have things that I can do as a broker. That um, I have broker tools over here. I can do office settings, do reports. I'll go back out and show you what you can do on yours. But yes, you have, if you're a broker listening today, you have more options. Over here on the left, broker tools. There's your templates. So a broker can do that. And then that can be given to the agents. They can use those templates. It's Okay, I'm being asked, is there any particular advantages that you think TransactionDesk has over ZipForms? 
Absolutely. I think, first of all, I call this one-stop shopping. So you, you go to my house tonight and I sign the listing agreement. You can come right here and start at the very beginning. You can start your transaction. You can name it, upload your forms. You can upload the data input sheet. You can um, email, you can just email me or you can have some have me sign it. And it's all together. Where it is now with zip forms, and zip forms is good, don't get me wrong. So you add your listing in MLS, you upload your documents, then you have to get out of MLS, you gotta go to zip forms and create your transaction there. Here, everything is together. Everything is together. Now, as I said earlier, if you are more comfortable using zip forms, by all means, continue to use it. What we'd like you to try is to, to use a dummy transaction. Set up a dummy transaction and send it to yourself in another email address so that you can sign it and see how it works, see how it flows for you. And I believe you, you might find it a lot easier. And again, if it's, if it's not, um, then you don't have to use it, except you must use this to upload any documents in your listing. Let me see if I got something from my email to sign. Here it is right here. Authentic sign invitation to review and sign documents. This is what it looks like on the other end. And click here to sign. It's two page with three signing blocks. The recipient, very much like zip forms, has to, what do they want to do, draw their signature? Now, I'm going to do this just <laughs> to show you that you can. Now, you can do that or you can, you can um, put, in your, put in your initials. And I can adopt that signature. And then I can accept it and I can go through and see right there, see where I added those? So all I need to do is click on them. And I'm next. And... I'm waiting for it to come through. It's, it's, it's doing the progress. But you can see it's, it's fairly easy. I didn't put any signature lines there. Do we have any other questions before we close this session out? We've had a good turnout. Lots of good questions, Heather. Very good questions. Yes. Um, I don't think so. Most of them I was able to address. Okay, great. Now... I'm excited to tell you the next webinar is, put it in your calendar, December 13th. Heather is going to be talking about MLS, statistics, and you. All kinds of statistics that you can send to your investors, your buyers, your sellers. You can see uh, how many days on market. You can go, she's going to talk about trends. She's going to talk about market reports. All the statistical information that's available to you in your MLS system she is going to be talking about. So you don't want to miss that, December 13th. You'll be able to sign up for it very shortly. Give us about a week. We have to put it on the, um, the calendar. I really appreciate you coming today and listening. I hope you learned some cool things and start using Transaction Desktop, or Transaction Desk, I should call it. And again, if you have any, any questions, please don't hesitate to call MLS. We're open Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 5. Thank you so much for coming and have a great rest of the week. Bye, guys.